Welcome back everyone to episode 2 in our playthrough. Let's see here. So one interesting thing that we haven't really done yet that I think we can come into or will come into some play later on is formations. So there's a square formation which if we click on a uh, party they will go into a squarish formation. There is a diamond formation, which has one person in the front, two heroes in the side, and one in the back. There is a angular formation, where they form like a 45 degree angle. Or, my favorite, the custom formation. There you go. And so by right clicking on the custom formation, you can create the formation however you like. So since I'm a primary offensive character, and she is a offensive character, we both fight up close, we can both be up front. However, since I have a sword and shield, I think I would be better as a defensive, like, front line. So I'm going to put her directly behind me and put me in the front and see what this looks like. There you go. A little bit of a gap. So now everywhere I click, she will move automatically. Oh, boy. Eyes forward. No looking back. You, the peace binder from the war, if you come to once again talk peace, it seems you're too late. So with the Vandering Guard I can gain major favor. Drop your weapon and perhaps we can settle this without bloodshed. We knew that violating the surrender meant an end to what little mercy and goodwill Curus's force have ever shown us. Now there's no turning back. I know you just tried to do right by us in the past, but now you're between us and the way out nothing personal. Fate Finder, did I hear that correctly? Maybe you understood why we're here. Scarlet Chorus reinforcements, hurry! Run down the Oathbreakers, let none escape. Mm, blood chanter, huh? From the red mob of reinforcements coming from the south, a blood chanter emerges at the head of the rabble, the ornamental crest of her staff pulsing with the crimson tones. Signing signals of magic and wordlessly moving her mouth, the blood chanter scribes a series of spells into the air. A red glow surrounds the Viridian Guard warriors as the chanter's magic worms its way into their mind, blinding them with rage. Hold position, all of you! You there! Keep to the path! No! Don't engage them! We need to run! Heads up! Okay, that's quite a lot of warrior. Okay. So we've got some options here. Good thing is my character is right in the front, so I want to take out this big guy. Tarkus Demos. I can tell by the stats that he has. 60 strength, or the resistances I should say, he has near the bottom, the cross swords as well as the flexing arm. Both of those, there we go, down here, parry skill and endurance defense. So he's going to be pretty tough, so I want to use my companion skill for that. So I'm going to click on my character, I'm going to get the blood soaked stone skill, and I'm going to use it on this front character to hopefully knock him down. Away my signal! Alright. And I got a skill up a one-handed weapon. So I want to keep attacking the same guy. And I'm going to, since I'm under attack, use my Warrior's Respite. And that'll give me constant health regen for the next 12 seconds. My other character, I want to have her just continue to attack. She's doing fine. This is useless. You should try something else. Damn thing couldn't pierce me. I'm only doing one damage per hit. Hmm. I'm going to try to sunder his armor and see if that helps. I missed. Try with my normal attack then. Nice, that was enough to down it. On it. Reduce her effectiveness with my spell. Or have her die. Come quick, we have a situation on the cliffside. They have the commander. Alright. 
Scarlet Chorus leather armor, huh? I'm gonna definitely need to take a look at that. Let's see. Better than mine in every way except crushing. Ooh, looks crazy. How about hers? Mine is better than hers, so go ahead and give that to her. Looks pretty good too. So she is level two. So let's see, can we give her any type of skills or anything? Talents? Oh, she's already spent them. Will do. Right, let's get them back in their formation. Heavy bronze boots. I like that. I like those heavy boots. All right, let's see if they're better than what she has. Yeah, I would say they are. Uh, can I destroy these? delete them. Hmm. I know I'm gonna run out of space eventually and I can't be only selling unless the uh, stash down here just keeps growing and growing. I guess we won't worry about it right now. We here. Stow your weapon so we find out how long a man screams before hitting the ravine down below. Skewer him. Worry not for me. Graven Ash will protect. You heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? This blade? If you're so eager to see your ally dead, just step closer. Oh wow, there's a whole bunch of things. Oh, well, from one of my conquest options, I'm Malaise. My name should be known to you, and it should be an honorable one. Please, give me the knife. Okay, so I'll gain average favor with the disfavor. That's pretty cool. That looks like it's going to be one of my biggest... Biggest choice. So I'm going to go with that. You? You're Tunian's envoy? If you will vouch my safety... His sentence is halted by a spear thrust into his lung. Leaking forward the moment Tyrell lowers his blade, the disfavored soldiers slaughter the Oathbreaker. Dazed but alive, Drassus lets out a long sigh and struggles to his feet. Say nothing. I offered that man mercy, and you made a liar out of me. But these mongrels require a firm hand. They can't be trusted, and... The fault lies with the Oathbreaker for forcing our hand. Just clean up this mess. <laughs> Kiros be praised. That Oathbreaker fought with the rage of Karen himself. Thank you, Fatebinder. I thought today was my last. From the look of it, guess they thought if they were a swarm in the past, maybe one might make it out? We found a few scraps of parchment on the bodies. A student of letters such as yourself should be able to make sense of this. Receiving the same message in different written scripts, the parchment explains that Viridian Guard's desire to overthrow Kiros' Archons and rout their armies from the tears. The pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the Younger Realms to gather at Vendrian's Well. Recruitment material. They were trying to bring more traitors to the fight. Well, from the look of it, we kept them from slipping out of the valley. Whatever they hoped to accomplish, I think their plan died here. The Archons are expecting you. 
When you're ready, leave the gate to the southeast and follow the trails downslope for a few hours. You'll see the campfires leagues away. You can't miss it. Follow the trail downslope for a few hours? Oh man. Alright, so let's go ahead and loot this. What have we got here? Oh, a two-handed weapon. Alright, alright, so there's some little things down here. Uh, I can't open that, can I? What happens if I click on this? Oh, it's just a torn banner. The prisoner says his name's Tarkus Demis. Then I don't think this is a complicated matter. He dies. His family has been a driving force in the Vendrian Guard. Killing him should demoralize whatever's left of the Tarkus clan. All must be given a chance to. You. I see how it is. Have you come once again to deny us our right? How do you expect us to fight if you're denied the right to claim new blood? <laughs> so it appears that my decision in conquest earlier is coming back to haunt me and this thing already as she recognized me and I'm gaining wrath with them. So the way the game is designed you gain either wrath or um, something else. I'll see it in a second here. It's the opposite. It's like good reputation. And for both directions, both good and negative reputation, there are abilities. And so sometimes it pays to have a faction really, really not like you. Or to really, really, really like you. Kind of depends on what you're going for. We'd like you to take prisoners, but you can't control them. You send these conscripts out on patrol, and they never return, deflecting all over again. I can't let this nonsense strategy continue. Well, I insist this Oathbreaker be taken to the Voices of Narat, leaving us an impasse. Unfortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the map for us. The Chanter turns to you, an expectant smile creeping across her face. So, what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Hmm. I kind of like the disfavored, so I'm going to go with uh, execute him. I agree with the strategy that if we let them get back to their soldiers, more than likely they're just going to end up battling us and fighting us again. The Tearsmen can't be trusted. Rakes, thieves, and whores. Nothing more. We were far too merciful the first time. Have this one tied up. He and his friends can watch each other rot in the sun. I won't keep you here any longer, Feybinder. I know you have important business in the valley. For the glory of Kiros. I do have to say, I like how every decision seems to affect things, rather positively or negatively. What do we have up here? Alright, so we've got mead. Okay, we can use that. Oh, the Fury Army. Only mead can equip this, huh? Oh, that's interesting. The, uh... Honor Guard's Bronze Falks has increased range too. You can reach farther with it. I'm considering maybe using um, what's her name, Verse, with a two-handed weapon as a source of damage. Let's see. What's this? Bangles gives haste plus one to quickness. No, where's my quickness at? Hmm. Wow, there's so many things. Okay, so Red Rivers gives me plus four to parry, which means my parry skill is now 46. Look at the bar is almost completely maxed. Oh, okay, never mind. That's to the next skill. 38 out of 38. 
Okay, so I'm going to basically become almost unkillable up close, that's the hope. And my dodge is going up as well. Oh, this is awesome. Alright, one-handed weapons, that's great. More accurate attacks. I like how the skills level up slowly as you go. And so here's Favor, I'm learning Wrath, and when I get to here, I get a passive effect of plus 30 defense against Beanie and Bernie attacks. Hmm. Alright, but still don't know what my quickness is. I think it's how fast I swing and things like that. I don't know. It's worth giving it to him. Well, it's actually probably worth giving it to her since she does more damage. So have her take the pangles, and this is going to be a lot more damage for her. So I can do that instead of a bow, it says? Well, no, I want her to have a bow still. Let's do that. Alright, well, so now she's got... Okay. So now she's got the two-handed weapon for damage, and she's got the bangle to give her quickness. So now she's got... Okay, so here's quickness. Alright. Determines how often they can use their ability in spells in combat and reduces Kubet cooldown duration. So that'll allow her to use her abilities more often. And she has a plus 10 accuracy from her seeking sheath stance. Wow. Okay, she's just going to be a monster damage. Let's do it. No, let's talk. What can we do here? Fate Binder. What an honor to have one of Tunian's court visit our humble holdfast. Need supplies? If so, you've come to the right place. So what'll it be today? How's trade? Oh jeez. Let's see what you have. Alright, let's see what at uh, Can I sell anything? So I have four camping supplies, no iron rings, no bronze rings, and I have 69 copper rings. I don't really need... These are all like basic weapons, I think. Ooh, the buckler. Fate binders. Does it compare with what I have? Identical. Just looks different. There's more camping supplies. Oh, okay, so I don't really need anything here. Can I sell? So I can't sell to her? Okay, well, I guess I can't sell to her. Ooh, what's over here? I see a hand. Climb the rope. Interesting. Ooh, what's that? Invisible push potion? Alright, let's go back down. It's an interesting way of traveling around the map. That's cool. Hmm. Let's travel over here. What is our quest? Make your way southeast. Here we go. There we go. 
Sorry, my push to talk button was the same button as my, um, as the open console button. So every time I push my push to talk to record my voice, it would. Oh wait, wait, wait! I saw a guy on a post. And this. Talk, what, what's going on with this guy? You there. And this, I beg you. Hmm. I kinda I kinda agree with that. It doesn't really matter if he's alive or dead, once he's hanging there, he's a pretty good warning either way, so you've suffered enough, your request is granted. Interesting. Disfavored camp. This fort was constructed shortly after routing rebels along the valley's western edge. The Archon, Graven Ash, directs all disfavored efforts from this location. Three hours. Let's do it! Okay, takes three hours, okay. Ooh, plus one to parry, plus one to do wheel. Not how sure how she got increased two wield skill. Not sure how she got increased two wield skill when she's not using a two wield skill right now. But well, slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. What's that? The voices of Narat told me that you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? Hmm. I actually kind of like her. She's direct, and she's going to be really powerful as well. So uh, let's see if we can get some uh, loyalty. I'm here to deliver an edict from Kiros, so I'm going to be honest with her. That makes a crazy kind of sense. Considering how long the siege has taxed the armies, I can understand why Kiros would change you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? The I'm gonna go for more loyalty. The Archons. One more thing for the Archons to fight over. Well, thanks for cluing me in. If Kiro sends any lightning our way, just tell me when to duck. I really ought to be meeting with those Archons. So that was four different increases to loyalty. So that's pretty good, and it seems pretty relevant to how I would choose. So it's not like I'm picking just for those points. The war tent is just past the center of the camp, and she nods towards the northeast. One last thing. Be careful around these dis disfavored types. They take their work seriously, and most have suffered slightly too many blows to the head. Let's talk to this guy over here. Hey, old fight binder. Camp's up on ahead. Don't mind us. Just clearing out the rabble. I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect that these are now disfavored lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll. But she's going on about trading rights? What nonsense is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another? It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. The Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit? A trading permit? Well, how was I... I mean, to whom should I speak for such a thing? Not us, and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before a Tunon. But we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make that long trek a bit more bearable. Hmm. Although I feel like I might be losing some favor with the disfavored, and I don't want to just let this person get everything taken from them needlessly. I mean, we do kind of want to have people on our side, especially if I'm going to be starting a rebellion. You had best start making a very strong argument as to why I should help you. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and... If the Fate Biter wishes to weigh in on the matter, 
courtesy demands that we listen. This is a disfavored matter, but I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. I like how flippant he is. <laughs> well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today, or you could leave me alive and have fermented honey all year long. I don't even know a few family recipes for painkillers and healing droughts. Certainly an army will need those. There we go. These are essential goods to the war effort. We should leave the supplier intact. Dang it, I clicked twice. I don't even know what I clicked. You seem so bent on protecting this tearsman, so be it, but prepare us both the prepare but spare us both the parchment. Peddle your wares, but know that you're one mistake away from being strung about the palisades as a warning to others. Understood, ma'am. You have shown me great mercy and I will not squander it. I will endeavor to keep his camp supplied to the best of my ability. Well, whatever I clicked the second time really fast on accident seemed to work out pretty well, so thankfully I didn't completely undo everything. My deepest thanks. I thought I was about to be robbed and left for dead, and here I thought the disfavor would thank me for trying to bring in brush provisions. I'll be sure to keep my head down and not make any waves. Well, that wasn't a bad situation. We're getting supplies for the camp and he didn't get killed. I mean... Uh, you would think I got it. You'd give me something to, that I could like use, but oh well. Will he sell to me? Thank you for talking down the disfavor for doing worse. Sad times you leave him when a humble living is branded a crime. I don't want to ask him for money. Well, let's see. So saving your hive is worth. Oh well, naturally, one good deed deserves another. Well, when I have my shop up and running, I'll sub your provisions for a song and give you a proper bounty on any odd bits of weapon you find, provided that you keep standing after me should those iron goons try to rough me up a second time. You were lucky with us before, merchant. Take care that you don't change your luck again. Challenge your luck again. Ursa's mean. <laughs> like, she's a tough girl, but man, she's... Don't mess with her. Alright, it says a little speak with verse. Let's see. Fate binder. Fate Binder. What do you need? Hmm. We could challenge each other to a fight. Uh, I honestly kind of like that idea of being like the warrior that wants to strive for just perfection in solo combat. Uh, yeah, you learned a two thing or two about fighting in the Scarlet Chorus. Care to duel? Fatebinder, I treat my craft like my mother treated her Hagsberry pie. I don't give the recipe to just anyone. Come to think of it, I still don't know what was in that damn pie. Okay, well, we'll talk again later then. No, actually, tell me something about yeah, yourself. If you insist, I'm a Scarlet Fury. That should raise some flags for you. It means that I'm good at killing, and more importantly, that I enjoy it. What I won't enjoy are the pleasures of funerary rites packed with weeping mourners. Someday I'll fall in battle, and then they'll roll me into a mass grave or heap me atop a shit-stained wagon. One more anonymous, knife-riddled piece of meat. How about you don't die, then? Jeez. Until then, I plan to take whatever I can from life and have a little fun along the way. What is the significance of your feathers? Insufficient reputation? You won't even tell me what the feathers are about? Oh, I don't tell that story to just anyone. You'll have to butter me up before I get into the really intimate details. Okay, enough. Farewell. I thought that was like she wanted to talk to me for a quest or something, but apparently it's just chatter. Alright, let's go up here before we go inside the town and make sure we're not missing anything. Alright, we don't want to leave yet. Well, look at you. Our gatecrasher from the court is still in one piece. Welcome to Disfavored Camp. Always happy to have an honored guest pay us a visit. Visit. Salute. Grave and Ash protects. Getting a little favor with them, right? That he does. Be well, Fatebinder. Glory to Kiros. 
Yeah, we're going inside. Pentabora, huh? Are you like a vendor? Hail to you, guardian of the law. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before battle. Oh, he's definitely a merchant. You know that if the disfavored suffer a merchant in their camp, that must be a man selling all of the finest provisions and armaments. Take a look and see if something interests you. Well, let me see your wares then. Let's see if we can find something you might like. Sigil of Frost Core. Manipulate freezing energies, huh? That's interesting. Okay, but like I can't sell anything. Can I can't sell this? I can. Where's like my general? I guess. I guess I gotta keep it in their own inventory if I want to sell it. Oh, I got a bronze ring for that? Good gosh. So I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this stuff then. I'm gonna use, keep that sword, because I may end up actually switching his sword to the accuracy one for increased damage. We'll see. I mean, I might not even need it, but... Getting the extra ability to not miss would be super helpful. Hmm. They're the same damage in every way. Just one has accuracy and the other one has parrying. I'm gonna go with the parrying one for now at least. Come back and talk to me. Alright, so now I can sell... I might as well sell all these things. I mean, the consumable items are nice, but I'm not really that fond of them, just because you use them and then they're gone, so... With the exception of potions. So I sold all that extra armor I don't need, Now I got seven bronze rings. That's nice. Alright. So... Probably... Gonna go a little bit further here and explore this camp. Well, this guy looks interesting. Sorry. Glory to the voices of Nerat. Fatebinder Malaise, I presume. I am Bitter Quip, and I am here as an emissary of the Scarlet Chorus. Uh, okay. Sorry, I Very can't. Well. Ooh, boots. That's a different icon. The Archons await you inside, Fate Binder. They're all in that little tent. Good gosh. Wow, look at these guys and girls. Yesterday you chided me for wishing to wait, now you suggest an even longer delay. Look at those stats on Graven Ash. Wow. That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery, but I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. 
My lords, the Fate Binder has arrived. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding halfwit grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? Yeah, uh... I'm pretty intense, but I'm not gonna be disrespectful to people that could rip me to shreds easily. And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ashes Folly in your honor. I'm gonna let him keep going, this is pretty comical. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the Tearsmen, perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief. Hold your tongue. I will not have you degenerate the honor of our fallen brethren. I'd be doing all of us a favor if I cracked open that excuse for a head. They bicker like children, do they not? I'm only meant to say welcome. Welcome to our guest, the Fate Binder. And not a moment too soon. Did I give you permission to speak? I... I'm just gonna... be quiet. I'm not gonna say anything. Welcome, Firestarter. We have been eagerly anticipating your arrival. Perchance you bring another of Kairos's edicts to savage the enemy? My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drotus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. Hmm. That's true. I don't think I need to be thanked for doing my sworn duty. Modesty is your prerogative, but know that cooperation and goodwill have been rarities of late. You do your Lord Tunon a great honor by aiding your cousins in the disfavored. No, oh, don't mind us while you trade your gushing praise. We're sure the Fatebinder has come because our company lacks in small talk. Well, I might as well come out and say it. I come bearing an edict of Kiros! It seemed only yesterday you were proving your worth in battle, assisting my warriors in the siege of the bastard city. Now Kairos has chosen you for a second time to proclaim an edict. Tell us, good Fatebinder, what sort of punishment does the Overlord have in store for the Oathbreakers? Hmm. I guess technically once I recite this edict, it's going to be binding with all of them anyway. Even if they kill me, they're still going to die if they don't successfully complete this. So I'm part of the solution. So at this point, I think I can be a little bit more aggressive in my response. In honor of your incompetence and disarray, the edict will execute every living thing in this valley. Unless Session Hall is taken by Kiros' Day of Swords. With the edict now proclaimed, your pulse clickens and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountains, feel renewed, the tired limbs now nearly buoyant with vigor. Oh. 
Wow. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. Well, you know what that means. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. Not back the up Earth Plan Shaker Green! didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. I'm just gonna be quiet. Doesn't I don't think arguing with any of these two right here is gonna help me at all. Plus, I might gain some valuable knowledge by letting them just talk and bicker. You make it sound like you've been putting even the slightest effort into getting a foothold across the Matani, when all you've done is set your gangs to uncoordinated raids. You're the Archon of Secrets. Why is it you still don't know the enemy's full strength and capabilities? Maybe you know, and choose not to share. Look, if you're afraid to send more troops against the Oathbreakers, just admit that you're a coward, and allow us to take charge of the situation. The Scarlet Chorus will be happy to prove it can do what the disfavored cannot. Okay, I, I'm sure many of the people watching this will know, but... Apparently the one in blue, Graven Ash, is the leader of the purple disfavored clan. And the voices of Nerat is the leader of the Scarlet Chorus. So that makes sense. So I'm gonna again remain silent. I tire of your incessant heckling. The disfavored have shouldered the brunt of this war, and I will not have you mock our sacrifices. My lord, Barak and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. And I will ensure the Chorus stands ready to march. If the Disfavored could take the river, the Chorus has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. So these two they were just talking, the Fifth Eye and the other commander must be like the generals. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse. We command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's Chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. Perfect, because I just spent a lot of equipment on her. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. No guarantees, everyone. Fine. The fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunan favor him in the end. Though the Edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time, to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. I'm sure my brother would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. I would be honored to help. I will be at the training grounds raiding the soldiers. Find me when you're ready. And although I'm loath to mention it, the chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the outer valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in the rat's nest they call a camp due east. Seek him out, if you must. I did it. 
Now that you have delivered a word of Curus's edict to the armies, the time remaining until Curus's Day of Swords appears next to the current date on the navigation bar up at the top. It says 8 right now. And the terms of Curus's edict must be met by this date or everyone in Varian's Den will die, including me? Oh man, really? Edict of Execution. Wow, I didn't know it would affect me too. That's awesome. Well, I mean, no, it's horrible, but I mean, it continues to make the game more believable. Ooh. Oh, I thought it was... Can we sold to a merchant of spare parts? Well, I guess that's okay. Oh, she was able to open that. That's nice. Disfavored Iron Sword. You learn something every Got day. Me. Level up. Alright, so before we do the level up process, I think this is a good place to stop this episode. So I'd like to thank everybody that stuck with us through the entire thing, and hopefully we'll see you come back for episode number three. So until then, have a great day. Bye.